Welcome to the Social Media Church Podcast. I'm Neil Smith, and I'm so excited about today's episode. Uh, we are going to be hearing from a guy that I have been following, uh, learning from from a distance, uh, even though we we're actually living very close to each other uh, for a season. Jonathan Mom is joining us, and so you've probably heard of Jonathan from Sunday Social, uh, from his books that he's written, from speaking. He does a lot of different things, and so I'm eager to hear his story, for you to hear his story while I hear his story. Uh, so Jonathan and I are connecting for the first time here today. So Jonathan, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. So there are so many things that I want to hear about in the backstory, uh, but maybe before we get to the backstory, what do you do today? What What is it that, that you do? Who, who are you? Yeah, I mean, I, I've fully embraced my eight on the Enneagram or ENTP <laughs> on Myers-Briggs where I just love doing a lot, of, a lot of different things. So I'm constantly starting new things, seeing if they work, seeing if they don't. Uh, but I love helping churches primarily. So uh, my books tend to be about like um, the welcome experience, uh, working with volunteers. Uh, Sunday Social is obviously about social media for churches. Um, church Stage Design Ideas is about Church Stage Design Ideas, that website. Uh, but yeah, just a lot of different things. Um, volunteer with my church, love helping out uh, in the guest services area. But yeah, random stuff. It's it's yeah. it's. Uh, the more the more busy I am and the more stuff I have going on, the, the better I can focus for some reason. Totally. totally. And let's get on the personal side. Where you're, you're in San Antonio. Do you have yep. family? What's, uh, what's the personal side? of, of Yeah. So we moved to San Antonio about six years, my wife and I. Um, yeah. And her sister was living here. My parents were living in Kerrville, which is like an hour away. And then all of our family came in, except for her brother who lives in LA. But like literally all of our family came in. So it's kind of cool. We have, we have most everyone within five minutes drive of us. So Christmas is on one hand that makes Christmas more difficult because you're having to like, like, do we go to both? Cause we totally can, or are we sticking to the, like, no, we're doing one family for Christmas, one family for Thanksgiving. So, uh, the benefit also is a challenge, but it's fun. It's, it's fun yes. being so close to my nieces and my nephew and it's, it's a blast. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm, I lived in San Antonio for a decade. Uh, it was a community Bible church. And so I love uh, San Antonio and I believe you go to Grace Avenue church. I, I go to Pearl street church. I Pearl was previously street. involved with Grace Avenue and recently, yeah. I don't know, my God, this is, I mean, it's also spiritual. I hate saying this, but yeah. I feel like God was telling us to go to this other church. So, awesome. so friends of the Grace Avenue church, love all the people there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, really plugged in at Pearl street church too. Do you live down in that area? No, we live like Northwest. We don't live by either of those churches. Okay. We live like 25 minutes from both churches. Yeah. yeah. But we never pick something close to us. I don't know why that is. Yeah, yeah. We we always wanted to live down the Pearl. We lived out oh, right by Grace Avenue. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Um, well, let's let's talk about basically how you got to where you are. Where where did this journey begin? Um, and may, maybe, yeah, let's talk about what, what's your background that led into serving churches in such a unique way. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I was born into, um, into church, like not at the church, but I was born into a church where my dad was on staff. He planted a church, uh, at age two. So we were, we were, uh, he was a, a pastor of like a, a church, a hundred people, maybe a hundred on a good day, uh, okay. tons of debt because they were trying to start this missionary training thing, yeah. uh, in this tiny, tiny town outside of Kerrville. So like Kerrville's small. And then yes. like, we were in like podunk, whatever. Huh. Uh, and so then, Fortunately, God res rescued us and took us to the mission field in Guatemala. So mm -hmm. age six to 12, we were missionaries, um, got a chance to see the churches in uh -huh. villages that have, you know, a guy with one string on his guitar and the speakers that are blaring and, and doing just, just songs for an hour, the same song with no word variations. Yeah. Uh, so got to experience that. We moved back to the U.S. Uh, where my dad founded a missions agency. That's still going in Kerrville, Texas. They have like, I think, 500 missionaries around the world. It's like, wow. Thing. Um, and then in the middle of that, he started uh, a, a church that I was born into, asked him to pastor, had gone through a massive church split, uh, lawsuits pending, a million dollars in debt, all the, all the nastiness. Uh, we went in there. Um, that's where I went to college. And in college, I started working um, as the church was coming up more healthy. I started working in like media and website and a bunch of different stuff. Um, when I graduated college, they brought me on full time and just did you know, worship leading, sound, everything, right? Everything yeah. creative. Uh, started getting into social media, even though it's kind of, it was kind of starting. No one really knew what to do on it yet. But, yes. um, and yeah, so then I started this website, Church Stage Design Ideas, because yeah. we, we were updating our, our church. It was a church built in the 70s. We were a very modern church. So trying to figure out how we can make the, 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 the look of the church match what was happening in the church. Yep. Um, 
And then that just grew. I was very intentional with growing it, but that grew and, and gave me the opportunity to work with, you know, different companies. Um, uh, briefly got to direct a conference called Echo Conference when my wife yeah. had moved up to Dallas so she could go to school. Yep. Uh, but yeah, just, just all sorts of, you know, from there, just, I just love the church. I've, I've, I've always loved the church, love helping the church. I love seeing the different contexts from a church in Guatemala with a guy with one guitar, uh, with a street, one string on his guitar, uh, and then the churches, the mega churches. I mean, I, I love the gamut because I feel like God's using all of it. Yes, I love it. I, you know, I think um, and in this space of serving the church from a business standpoint, it, it uh, there's times where I feel like, and I've been on the I've, you know, primarily as a pastor, feeling like man, there's people trying to take advantage of the church. And then there's people that are genuinely trying to serve the church. And I, I think there's more people genuinely trying to serve. Oh the yeah. Church. I don't think there's that yeah, much I think so. business opportunity really in the church, but there, there is a, a unique opportunity. And I love, uh, and the people that I've known that have known you have told me like, man, Jonathan's a guy that like is all about the church. Um, and so cool. I appreciate your heart for that and understanding how you're able to have basically a scalable ministry uh, by helping so many churches. And I, I love what church, yeah. church stage designs is a side I've followed for many years. And, you know, I remember being a youth pastor and like struggling with like, how do I do this on a hundred dollar budget? You know, like how do yeah. I have a cool budget? Cause I look at church like Willow Creek and I can't do that, but I wanted to look cool like them. And um, and so what, what you did with that side and what you continue to do with that side is, is really incredible. I want to talk about Sunday social though, because I think it's, sure. it's one of the most unique things, uh, that anybody has ever done to serve the church in the, in the social media space. And so if you, I, I would love to hear, how did you get the idea for Sunday social? What was the birth, um, and development of, of that platform or business? Yeah. So my buddy, Joe Cavazos, who's my business partner on it, we both worked with Igniter Media when I was directing Echo Conference. Uh, he worked with uh, Graceway Media, Igniter Media. They were separate at that point. Um, and we just, we were friends at that point. So we just, we yeah. talked all the time. We met up for lunch all the, all the time. And he was telling me, he's like, man, I really want them to do social media. I feel like there's something to do with social media. Um, and they were like, no, it's not. And, and I get it at that time. Like it was yeah. still, it was, Joe's very much. What year it. was, how long ago was this? Oh man, that was like maybe maybe six years ago. So it was okay. it was it was a it was a bit ago. Yeah. Um, whenever, we, whenever we had that idea, uh, and so then, independent circumstances, we both left uh, Igniter. Still friends with all those people. Yeah. Nothing weird. I'll, anytime you leave something, I feel like people are like suspicious. Yes. No, we all we love Rob. Uh, I and, get that with CBC a lot of like, what happened? What, what happened? happened? What happened? Yeah. Let me show you the text messages of Ed Newton. He's a friend, you know. I yeah, just, yeah. I elsewhere, so Sometimes I get it. it's okay to leave and go to a yeah. new place. It happens. Yes. <laughs> and yes. you, yeah. But anyways, uh, but yeah. So, um, anyways, we were just we were talking, and and he was he was feeling this burden to he would constantly have these churches that wanted to to hire him to do graphic design. And he's like, man, I can't. I can't lower my price point because I only have so many hours in my day. I want to yeah. do something great and I can't help these churches that, that can't afford me, but I wish I could. And so that kind of got my wheel spinning. I, as much as possible, I look to work with friends. I love, and he's a good friend. So I yeah. trust him. And so um, I was thinking about a social media idea. I was thinking about how, you know, what could we do to like scale him in a sense? Yeah. Um, and so I had this idea of, of, of designing 30 graphics a month and, and making that a, a subscription based thing. And he's like, I don't know, man, that's, that's like, if we have, if we have 150 people, that's like five bucks a graphic or like, I mean, I don't know. The, I did the math all wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like, that, that, that doesn't work. And I'm like, trust me, it'll work. I think we can, I think we can long-term get the benefit from it. We can get yeah. enough people on board. Yeah. Uh, so he, he risked it with me and, and we started growing and then he had way more, more of a vision. I think I had like, Oh, maybe we can get like a hundred, 500 people doing it. Yeah. Like I, all of my things I have the lowest vision for, and then, and then Joe or someone else has a better vision for them. So, uh, but yeah, so now we're at, I think like 2,200 at current count. Wow. Um, and just realized, man, there's so many churches still that, that, that can, that this can help. So. I love, so it's almost like a co-op, uh, for, for social yeah. media, for churches of they, they get kind of high level, what would cost a lot of money at a fraction of the cost. That's a great perspective and on it. I might use that. <laughs> To, because that's that's an incredible service to a church, but from a business standpoint, there's a giant risk of if you only have 20 churches doing it, yeah. you're losing so much money. Um, yeah, and just poor Joe is going to be working for nothing. Like, <laughs> yeah, but but I think too, but him, yeah. <laughs> the more churches that get on board, the more you can invest in those resources and then help yeah. uh, the higher quality resources that churches have the best. And that's uh, what that's what we've done is we're now doing 90 gra well more than that like 114 graphics a month and wow. hiring other designers and and doing new product types and it's just fun wow. you know the the more 
I mean, it's always the case. The more money that comes in, the more we can put toward it. And uh, it's no longer a side hustle for us. It's actually something yes. that's fun and, and, a, and a business for us, so which is cool. So I'm curious, as you've seen social media change, well, I'm, I'm curious. So six years, you've kind of been on this path. Mm -hmm. What have you seen from a chain, just how has social media changed in the last six years? And then how have you guys had to adapt to some yeah. of those changes uh, as, as it's a moving target in many ways? You know, the, the funny thing about social media, and it it's, it's, can be frustrating for some people, but I find it exhilarating, is I yeah. think as soon as someone learns a truth about social media, it changes. Hmm. Because everyone starts doing one thing, and then that becomes noise. Yep. And then it's the people that try something different that are yep. able to make the breakthrough into yep. an audience, right? So, so, I mean, and even seeing how Generation Z, I have my sister-in-law is 18. I hang out with her a bunch, just ask her questions, try to keep up with the current language. And she tells me how she uses social media or how she uses TikTok or how she uses all these different platforms. And I see like, you know, that whole model of like, you have to post every day. You have to post every day. She posts once every three weeks maybe and gets a bajillion likes. Yes. It's actually good content that people want to see from her. Yes. yes. Uh, so just seeing the things that like, and even like video, people like video is king, video is king. And then, uh, I even bought into that idea. I'm like, oh, video must be king. We're not going to deal with Sunday social, but video is king. And lately I'm seeing, man, video is actually underperforming. There are exceptions, obviously. If you create great quality yes. content, there's exceptions. But video is not performing as well as still on Instagram. And interesting. Platforms. Yeah. So it, it, it's interesting that the, the, the things that people are so adamant about, mm -hmm. a month later they change. And if, you, if you're not willing to, to, to hold that idea lightly, it's going to, you're going to become, become obsolete basically. <laughs> Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. I, I, I love that. And I love that too. You're, you're monitoring those trends and helping serve the church together. Uh, because yeah. I think about a, a general church that maybe has two staff people. Uh, they don't have time to study the nuances of is this video or put graphics and yeah. time, we don't have a graphic designer. We don't have video edit. You know, it's literally them and Canva. Yeah. Uh, and, and then for them to have those assets and you to do uh, that, that essentially that research for them and as well as the content development. Fantastic. What I, as you look forward with social media uh, and as you look to continue to serve those 2200 churches, and I, I would assume 5,000 in the next couple of years um, that what, what do you, um, wh where, where do you see things going? What, what do you see on the horizon? Yeah. I mean, I, that, that's a, that's a, I've never been able to see more than three months in advance. Okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, and that's, and I think that's a healthy thing. Like, I don't know in three months, to be honest, in three months, Sunday social might not exist because like the thing that made it a thing might not be the case anymore. Right. Uh, so I'm never that far ahead. One thing, one trend that I see developing and it's been developing for a while, but I've really caught on recently, especially as I've been using TikTok. Yeah. Um, and if you're on TikTok. Uh, don't judge me for being on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. If you've heard all the bad stuff, don't judge me for it. There's a lot of entertaining. It, what's so yes. fun about TikTok is seeing Generation Z creating amazing yes. content that's so entertaining. Yes. Um, and others, you know, others are, are jumping on board too, but I love Generation Z. And, it, and, and it's really fascinating to see. It's kind of tragic, but fascinating to see the, 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 their life, the things they work with, like they make videos that, mock and joke about school shootings which is crazy to me but like that's the reality of like i might get shot today and so there's this humor about it because it's the reality yeah uh, and it's, it's it's crazy to me i'm like when i see it i'm like <gasps> like my yeah. millennial self i can't handle it but no. I realize, man, that's the reality that's what they're dealing yeah. with so it's interesting seeing that but then i'm also realizing that um more than anything now people want to be in full control of their viewing experience so what that means is I won't watch a 15 second video unless I think it's going to pay off. Like me waiting 15 seconds, I skip TikTok videos that are 15 seconds because yeah. I don't think they're going to be entertaining enough. So realizing as I'm watching stories, even for my own church, which I'm hoping to see myself in my church stories, but they post <laughs> videos and I'm like, man, this is a 15 second story and it's a video. I'm not in control and it frustrates me. It frustrates me that I'm not in control of seeing what's, what's coming. You know, the great thing about carousel posts is I can go at my own speed. Yep. I can yep. tap at my own, my own speed. With yep. videos, I can't. I'm, I'm at your mercy, and you better be good. Otherwise, I'm frustrated, right? Yep. Um, and so it, it's interesting. I really see that, and I don't know how this is going to work, but I really see yep. that 
you know, maybe the future thing will be stories that you can fast forward or something like that. But really, we want to be in control of the speed yeah. of our content. We want to consume it at our pace. That's why a lot of Generation Z don't like TV because I don't want to wait a full hour to get the story or a yeah. full 30 minutes. Yeah. I want to be in control of the content. So I don't know what that's going to look like. Yes. But that's what I see the trend happening is that there's going to be, I mean, I mean, almost like a choose your own adventure, but like a choose your own speed of story type thing. I don't know what that looks like. <laughs> that doesn't help much. But. It's fascinating. It's fascinating to think about, though. I, I would lo love to know with TikTok. Uh, let's talk about TikTok for a minute because this is it's a platform yeah. I'm intrigued by. Did you get on it for research purposes or were you literally or genuinely, and do you find yourself now so entertained that you're just getting on for entertainment value? What, what, was, what led you into TikTok? I was skeptical because Brady Shear was promoting it like crazy. Yep. And I love Brady, but anytime someone promotes something like crazy, like a new social media, I'm like, nah, that's garbage. You know, like anytime someone's like that adamant and he was so adamant about it. So I'm yes. like, nah, Brady, nah, you don't know what you're talking about. And yep. then um, these meme accounts that I follow on Instagram, they keep posting these TikTok videos. And I'm yep. like, oh, okay, apparently, you know, like it used to be like all the, all the Twitter was where all the, all the comedy yep. was happening. Yep. Now I'm realizing TikTok is where the comedy is happening. So, I was like, man, if, if that's all the good content being created, I should just get on there just to check it because I love memes. So I go on there and I'm just, I find myself laughing like yeah. every 15 seconds almost. Like this is really yeah. funny stuff. So yes. um, I'm still not necessarily bought into, and I've had some, some I butted heads with some, some big names in the church, social media things. I'm still not bought into the idea of churches being on TikTok. I think some churches will kill it and do awesome yes. at it. Yes. I think the majority of churches probably shouldn't do it because they're oh. barely killing, they're not even they're not even doing Instagram well. So why are you yes. going to try TikTok when TikTok's yes. even more entertaining than Instagram? Yes. So, but there is this element. I'm like, man, I just, I always love watching the next generation. I, I'm never going to, I hope I'm never going to be one of those people that like, ah, that next generation, they don't know <laughs> what they're talking about. Um, I just think that's so short-sighted. It's yes. missing the beauty that each generation brings to the world. I believe God has uniquely gifted yeah. each generation with a voice that yeah. no other generation has had and opportunities that no other generation has had. So yes. I love seeing that. Yes. Um, so I just, you know, for that reason too, I just, well, I love seeing it. Like I love just getting the glimpse. I've tried making my own videos and you know, done okay. But I'm like, you know, I do other things. Well, I should probably stick to those and just enjoy the next generation making their great content. Yep. Um, that is to say people my age shouldn't make, there's some great people my age that are making great content. I'm not yeah, saying yeah. that. Have you seen but, Dave Adamson's stuff? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Incredible stuff. Yeah. So there's some, there's some really good quality stuff. I mean, I, and I think there is an opportunity for churches, but Right now, I don't know what that is. And I think yes. nobody fully knows what that is. But what I do love is there are people trying and the people that really see the vision for it, they're trying. And that's a good yes. thing. So um, if you were to prioritize social networks today for a church, where, where, what, would you, what would be your ranking system for a small church who's just getting into yeah. social media, where to invest their energy? Facebook groups. Yep. Um, and then maybe Instagram. And then maybe Facebook, but I would use Facebook primarily. And this is something we're, we're shifting with Sunday Social for, for our own platform. I would shift it to being more like a web page where mm -hmm. you get people to comment. You, you share what people are saying about your church because that's where people mm -hmm. are actually checking, about, checking out your church. They want, they're, they're curious about it. Yeah. Um, they, that's almost like your website now, right? So how do uh, they so do that? Is that like a screenshot? Is that a, like literally going to personal comments and, then, and just share it to your page? How, do, how does that work? I mean, the way we're going to start doing this, and we actually got this idea from Church Motion Graphics, who's kind of a competitor of ours, but yeah. Jeff's doing a great job with his Facebook, is he's sharing testimonials, um, yeah. you know, screenshots of testimonials or sharing hmm. content that he's creating. Um, and and the, the engagement is super low, and that's okay. okay. Yep. I think your engagement on Facebook pages, and there, there's exceptions, obviously. People are killing it on Facebook pages. Yeah. Other people do. But you're, you're probably not going to get as much engagement as Instagram yes. and Facebook groups. Yeah. Um, but if you're okay with that and realize what I'm working toward is more just to let people know about the church for people who are curious and almost be a static web page that people can visit and just kind of see the life. Yes. And it's great. You're, gonna, you're yes. not going to be frustrated. And I think that's always the case is you have to really go into any social media media platform and say, what are my goals here? Mm. Facebook groups, your goals are probably going to be to just to get engagement, conversation, yeah. Uh, yeah. those interactive posts that everyone wants to do. Like, you know, what's your favorite type of pie? I really see Facebook groups as a great opportunity for that. Yeah. Not as, Instagram does work in that to a degree, but you also yep. run the risk of creating your account, turning your account into a meme account, right? Yes. Um, which I don't know why your church account should be a meme account. <laughs> so I do believe there's purpose for that. And I'd say primarily Facebook, Instagram, beautiful. Cause that, that platform is very beauty based. So yes. beautiful imagery, uh, something, if they can see pictures of their friends or of themselves, that's great. 
um, encouragement. That's great for Instagram, Facebook, engage, Facebook group engagement, uh, Facebook pages, just that kind of stuff. And then Twitter, you know, I mean, there's some, some communities Twitter will be great for probably most communities, not uh, TikTok. man, I'd put that way low at the bottom, even, even below Snapchat, maybe, but I don't, I wouldn't recommend Snapchat unless you're YouTube. <laughs> Yes. Anyways, that's so I don't know if that gives you a proper ranking. Yeah. Those three though, Facebook groups, Instagram, and then Facebook. Great advice. That's probably what Great I would advice. recommend. Yeah. And Twitter, Twitter, not even on that list. Yeah. I mean, in some communities, you know, some communities that work, like, you know, there's some, there's some, there's a cult following on Twitter. And so if you have those types of people in your church, yep. man, they're going to engage on it. Great. But uh, yeah. many churches probably not. Yes. Uh, and this is, this is so far outside of it, but we're going into a political season um, mm. with social media and Twitter in particular, a lot of politics engaged yeah. on there. Any thoughts from you of how a church should or shouldn't um, engage in, or even church leaders, you know, personally engaged with politics and social media as we go into this presidential, you know, cycle. Yeah. One of my favorite things I see churches doing, and this is, I think something my dad did, does masterfully is he always elevates the conversation from this to this so everyone's going to be fighting democrat republican uh pro-life pro-choice they're going to be debating this stuff right here right and then if we have the opportunity to bring eternity into the conversation we're not addressing specific people specific issues we're saying this is what god wants for us yes um that's just refreshing and enlightening and um you know there are some people who believe churches should be really involved in politics i'm not as much on that in that i think we should be involved in the conversations that are of eternal value and yes. let, that, let that dictate what people believe about the lower stuff so instead of being you know black and white a b yin yang whatever all that like that binary thinking i really believe we have and i wrote a book about this called the hidden option i believe we have the opportunity to 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 speak the hidden option the the hidden truth into the conversation um god's eternal truth in the conversation and it'll just be i think it'll be refreshing for people Yes. Well, that's so good. That's so good. Um, and <clears throat> I just want to say, go get that book. You know, that's probably <laughs> a, good, a good read uh, going into this season because I, I think um, in having, wor- I work with a lot of pastors and, and their social media and I, and I have, you know, I remember Robert Emmett uh, at Community Bible Church got into some trouble uh, two, eight years ago and during the election and um, it got messy quickly by just a few statements or a few comments on yeah. a Facebook post and um, it's, it's even the Robert had, you know, obviously a, a, the largest church in San Antonio, but, um, I think any pastor, you know, it's, it can be sticky. And I think too, you can have a unique perspective because being quiet, isn't the answer either. I, I think yeah. eternity, I love that, uh, th- that word. Um, so I encourage people to get that book. I also encourage people to go to sundaysocial.tv, uh, and check out the options. See how, if you're not using Sunday social, it is so affordable, um, and even if you use just like one, you know, post yeah. a month out of it, you're getting your money's worth. It is, uh, so valuable. And I've gotten a chance to look at a lot of the content and it's so good. It's so creative. Uh, so I want to get you encouraged people to check that out. I'm Thanks. also launching a new project, uh, right now. Jonathan and I are, are, are partnering in that or Jonathan's been yeah. gracious enough to partner with me, uh, in my new project. I'm not going to give away exactly how we're partnering, but I want to encourage you to go to neilsmith.com slash grow. Um, and, and I'm launching a program called Growing Your Church with Social Media. Um, and so go sign up for that. Uh, and then you'll find out uh, as you get into that training how uh, Jonathan and I are partnering. And so did, I went, you, just cl- did you just clickbait people? I, I tried to clickbait. <laughs> so I hope neilsmith.com slash grow, clickbait, go get it. Uh, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. Uh, so, so a little. Teaser. You just buzzfeeded them. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome, um, I, Jonathan. Though I'm curious about you. You released a new book um, recently called "The Comeback Effect." Yeah. Uh, can you share a little bit about what that is and what it's about? Yeah. So me and my buddy Jason Young, he uh, was previously the guest services director at Buckhead Church, one of Andy Stanley's oh, yeah. five churches or whatever, um, and all of North Point, I think, Ministries campuses, but. We partnered together to write this book, um, yeah, a, a while ago, and uh, it's just really about how to create like excellence at your church, excellence in guest yeah. services. How to use hot. Really, the idea is like we, we, we think of we think of serving like 
uh, we got to serve people. We got to serve people. And serving people is very task oriented. Yes. You can do all the right things and still not make people feel welcome. Mm. Uh, so we approach the idea, the idea of hospitality, where the yes. idea of the feeling behind everything you do. What can you do for people's feelings? Yes. And the church is kind of afraid of emotional emotions and feelings, but uh, we do it in a healthy way. We talk about it in a healthy and very theologically correct way of, of replacing negative emotions with positive emotions and some practical ideas on how to do that uh, for churches. Yeah. How I'm, I'm, and so with that, and so I've been fascinated about this concept and even how does digital ministry and physical ministry in, integrate? Mm -hmm. I'm curious from what you see of both social media, website engagement, email communication, how does, how does that digital communication uh, with the kind of physical attendance uh, and engagement tie together from your perspective? Yeah, I actually, I mean, we'll get into some kind of nitty gritty social stuff here, if you want, is I, I saw this post from Life Church Switch, which is their, I think they're like middle school, high school yep. ministry. And th this post, it was so simple. They said, you know, our teams are learning about social media. And they said, all, every one of their posts should have something that either reinforces belonging, offers solutions, or um, shows their identity, right? Um, so those are the three things that they try to make every post, make sure that you're addressing those, one of those three things in a post. And I'm like, man, that's phenomenal. Cause that's what everyone's struggling with. And what I love about the way they approach that is, is they thought, what are, what are people feeling as they're scrolling through social media? What are people feeling when they go into the church? What are people feeling if they're attending an online service? What are those emotions? What are they, what are they wrestling with? And then how can we speak to that? Yeah. Um, it's simple marketing. That's marketing one-on-one. -on -one, right. But like, we so often forget that we think yeah. like, Oh, we had some cool, we had a snowman at the church this week, which that's fine. I'm not saying don't post about the snowman or whatever, but like the idea of like, you know, people, they, they're looking for entertainment. So the reason you're posting that snowman is people are like, Oh, I want to smile. I want something to like brighten my day to day. Right. That yeah. did it. Um, so just thinking through the idea of like, what are the emotions? What are the things people are dealing with? Um, so even the idea of, you know, um, someone committed suicide, a famous person committed yeah. suicide. Like people yes. are just wrestling with like, wow, I've, I've actually had thoughts of that. Like that's, it's, it's shocking. I've had so many conversations after uh, one recent church leader committed suicide and, and some friends of mine are like, man, you know, I've, I've had those thoughts before. Like I've had those kind of like mm -hmm. obsessions before and like just getting to talk through that and realizing, man, that's a common thing. Like maybe okay. I don't, cause I don't struggle with anxiety. I don't struggle with depression. My wife, my wife is on the other spectrum though. She struggles mm -hmm. with that. So getting to be able to be part of that conversation and I'll even ask her, Hey, how, what can I say to help this conversation? Like yeah. what could Sunday social say to help this conversation? Right. Yeah. Um, just something encouraging. Um, so that's what I, I would love more churches to do um, is really think through the, 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 the thing people are going through and then how can you speak to that? Love that. I love that. And, and I think perspective wise, you don't have to wait till they're sitting uh, in the pew on Sunday to yeah. speak into the, those cultural things and those cultural issues is that engagement can happen before and after uh, it, on these digital platforms. Um, yeah, for sure. It's a both and integration. So I, I love you speaking into that. Jonathan, as we wrap up uh, this podcast, how, how can people best connect with you and engage with you online? Yeah. Hit me up at jonathanmalm.com. Uh, Jonathan Malm on Instagram, literally all the Jonathan Malms. I think Gmail, I don't have Jonathan Malm. I have Jonathan P. <laughs> Malm, but uh, oops, I just gave you my email. I just, now it's fine. E email me. That's fine. Uh, yeah. So just find me there and I love new friends, love connecting with people I've never met before and, and just tell me what you're up to. I'd love to hear it. That's great. I love uh, that you're personally engaged and that's how we connected on social media. Um, and so I, I love and go connect uh, with Jonathan there on uh, various social platforms to check out his website and all the incredible things he's doing. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Social Media Church Podcast. Go to socialmedia.church for the show notes uh, and everything else connected to this podcast and to listen to other episodes and make sure you leave a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever it is you're listening. Thanks for listening to the podcast.